part, we will see and we will talk about how to generate the API documentation. So first of all, I need here to mention that we need to add the, the, the Swagger dependencies, which are those two, which are the Spring Fox, uh, Spring Fox Swagger 2 and the Sp Spring Fox Swagger UI. The Swagger UI is for uh, to generate the UI, to be able to access the UI we saw in the previous, uh, the previous lecture. So now I will explain to you how to use and generate this API. So first of all, let's take, for example, the category API, the interface. And now I will explain uh, method by method. Or, well, it's, uh, they are the same annotations, so I will explain only, explain only for one method, and then it's going to be the same for all of them. So here, for, uh, for each controller, or each, here we are, we are using interface, so for each interface, we need to add this API annotation. This part is not mandatory. We can just remove it, but it's better to add it. So at least here we can get, uh, or we can, uh, we can know this API, uh, this is the API for which uh, controller or for which resource. Here, this is the annotation from Spring. Here we are uh, in the create category method. We have a post mapping. Uh, the value is the upload slash API slash category slash create. It consumes uh, application uh, uh, consumes application JSON value. So we receive a JSON uh, value or a DTO as a JSON. And it will reproduce also a JSON. So here we provide or we specify the API, but we have, this is an API operation and the value, this is the description. That means we create a category, uh, the notes create a new category and the response, this is the response type. The response uh, is the class that we need to, to return. In our case, this is the category detail.class. And I will see, we will see, for example, if we need to return a list of category or another specific uh, type, uh, all we need to do is use uh, response container instead of response. And here we, we say that we need to return a list of category DTO. So this is the first one. And now here we can also precise the API responses. So in case uh, here for the creation, here I added only that uh, we add uh, an API response, which is with the code is 201 and the message is uh, the, um, the newly created uh, category. That means this code is for, for the newly created category. I can add, for example, also another one, an API response, the code, 404 or let's say 400 and the message the message is invalid category DTO or invalid entries so those are the API responses that I can provide and then uh, for example for the parameters I annotate the parameters with the API param, and here we have value, uh, which is like the description of, uh, of this parameter and if it's required or not. So here for, to create a new category, the, the category DTO is fully required. And the response body is this, this is the annotation from Spring. That means we receive this object as a JSON object. So it's the same for all the other uh, the other annotations so it's uh, it's really quite easy and simple uh, there is something uh, something else i need to mention for example if uh, if i want to pass uh, or if i want to use a different i'm talking here i just want to precise this here we are talking we are talking about the api documentation we are not talking anymore about the rest api uh, it's about the API documentation. So here, if it's category DTO, and I want here to, to use a different name, so all I need to do is to use the name attribute and say cat, for example, for the category. 
So here, here we are, and we have all the freedom of of, of choosing uh, what name we need to pass. But by default, it's going to give the attribute name. So I will just roll back everything. Now this is uh, this is the Java part. We have also another another part we need to we need to talk about and I need to explain it to you in order to be able to generate the API documentation. So let's go back to the pom.xml file. And here we need to create or we need to add a plugin. So this plugin is gonna automatically map or it is gonna automatically scan these packages, this package or the packages we, we will provide and then we will uh, analyze and process all those uh, annotations and generate the API documentation. So the plugin is this one. This is the plugin and I will explain it uh, step by step. So for the plugin, we, are, we will use the plugin from uh, com.github.comchain and the artifact is Swagger Maven plugin. The version is 3.1.8 and now we have the configuration. The first, the first part of the configuration is the API sources and we have an API, we can provide many API sources. Here for example, uh, we have here the Spring MVC true because the, the context is Spring MVC, it can, it can be another context. Um, we can use for example EGB and so on and so forth. The locations, here we can provide different locations. So let's say, for example, that I have the, my controllers in different packages. The first one is, uh, for example, controllers. The other one, uh, I don't know, controllers two, controllers three, four, and so on and so forth. So I can provide different uh, different locations. So here I want to scan the package com.boali.tulu.controllers. Here, the base path, the base path you can leave leave just slash like this, but we need this path to generate uh, to use it later in the front end application. Here, this is the, some information about our doc API documentation. So it's uh, the title is Swagger API documentation for the to do application. The version it's going to be automatically the project version, which is. Uh, 0 0.0.1 snapshot. When we change this, the, the version is gonna uh, gonna change automatically. Uh, description also here it's Swagger Swagger API documentation for to do application. Uh, here we can this this part is optional, but I you can provide your contact. For example, in the case of professional project, you can provide like uh, a contact email in case of problem or in case of questions. Uh, the URL, for example, here I'm mentioning my uh, my Udemy profile URL. So this is for the part for the info part. So this part is done. Now let's move to this four lines. Here, the output path is that means when I generate my uh, my API where I want it to be saved. For example, if I want to upload it automatically to uh, to a specific uh, server or storage server, we can just provide it here. Uh, or if it's in the directory for me, I, I use automatically the build directory. So it's going to be this 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 folder, the target folder. And the output formats, we can generate several formats. And the output format for me, I choose the JSON format. And the API reader, because here we are in the context of Spring MVC, it's gonna be we need to provide the class name Spring MVC API reader, and Swagger directory it's gonna be the same also as the build. Then if everything is fine, all we need to do is for there are two different ways we go here to Maven and we click on this M character execute Maven goal, and all we need to do is maven clean and start. And we run this command. Automatically, the project is going to be scanned and everything is going to be generated. I will show you the output later. Or we can use it using the command line, using the, the same command maven clean and start. And type enter 
and everything is going to be working fine. So once the build is finished with success, we can go and check in the target project and we will find this file, which is Swagger JSON. And this is, uh, this is the type we generated. If I change it, for example, to YAML, it's gonna, we will generate a YAML file instead of JSON file. And the name is automatically Swagger. So if we go and check this file, what do we have? Here, here we have the Swagger 2.0, which is the one we specify, specified here, Swagger 2. We have the info, which is the API information we, we have it here, with the description, version, uh, title, and the contact information. This is our base path. And now we have the tags. The tags actually are um, those one. Every time we scan API with, uh, with a name or with a string provided, it's gonna be in the tags. So here, let's check, for example, let's go to, okay, I will close everything and make it easier and faster for you. Sorry for not doing this before. Okay, so here let's check, for example, the category. Those, uh, every time we found the path slash category slash to do, or sl only slash API slash category, it's gonna be the thing that we are looking for. So for example, here we have slash API slash category slash all, which is this method, or let's start with the create. Category slash create, yeah, this one. So in this category, uh, in this for this path, the API slash category slash create, which refers to this one, the app root, which is API, as you can see here, slash categories slash create. Here, the method type is post, which is this one, the post mapping. Here, a summary, create, create a category, the one we have here, and the note is gonna be create a new category. This is the description. The operation ID, which is the method name. This one, create category, and we can also override it if, if you want to provide something else. Uh, it also consumes and produces application slash JSON, which is this one. As you can see here, the value is application slash JSON. Now we have the responses. The responses we already specified here. We have the API, or API response. 2001 and the message the newly created category. Now this code and we have we have by default or implicitly the 200 uh, the 200 code which is successful operation. If we do not even if we do not precise it, it's going to be automatically inserted. And here for this category DTO and we can as we can see here. We preset that the response is going to be a category DTO dot class. So here it's a definition of the category DTO that we can find in the bottom of this file. Here we have the user DTO, the TDU uh, to do DTO, and we have here the definition of the category DTO, and which is a type. This is an object. The properties we have the ID, name, description, user, and the to do list. For example, for the for the complex types, for example, user, we have also a reference that this refers to the user DTO, which is here. So let's go back here, and now the, we have our API document documentation. We can provide this, or we can use this to generate. Uh, for example, in our case, or in our example of this application, we will use this Swagger.json file to generate all the front-end services without coding any line. So that's it about uh, how to generate the API documentation.